By 1993, the Duke of Edinburgh, the owner of 56 shooting rifles, had brought down 30,000 birds from the skies, he'd killed two crocodiles, as well as scores of wild boar, several hundred Scottish stags, and an Indian tiger. The Duke of Edinburgh's accumulation of animal corpses, piled up over the past 40 years, ranges widely over continents, covering mammals and birds for the Tweedy Duke's jocular holocaust. Figures compiled from press reports in Britain alone reveal this conservationist as targeting hare, wild duck, snipe, woodcock, teal, pigeon and partridge, commandeering English wildlife with lead shot. In 1993, at the royal family's Sandringham estate, shooting pheasant daily, often with his wife, the Duke hit a target of 10,000 during his seven-week stay. His Norfolk parties have now bagged 150,000. Should the Duke partially miss, then a bird he's wounded is brought by a gun dog to the royal group, where the Queen stands waiting with a convenient stick, and Her Majesty bludgeons it to death. Prince Philip especially enjoys shooting wild boar on the estates of friends in Germany. On one occasion, he and Prince Charles, wrote the Independent, are said to have killed 50 wild boar in a single day. Prince Philip frequently defends his love of blood sports by claiming that he's culling rather than killing all the wildlife he's dispatching, though to wildlife itself it's a distinction without a difference. Alive to the importance of royal tradition, Prince Andrew first took his daughter out shooting when she was six. Perhaps the prince had told her about culling and killing, or perhaps he simply told her shooting was fun. Above all, he adores shooting rabbits, said a hunting friend of William's shooting in the hills above Loch Muick, though the trainee royal's late mother said she was sorry her sons were, in her words, so keen on killing things. To Diana, they'd grown into a couple of little thugs who'd boast to classmates of Granny's castles. When I'm king, Prince William would say when thwarted, I'm going to send my knights around to kill you. If you give me a hard time, he told a schoolboy opponent, I'll get my dad to cut your head off. As if aware of some entitlement to adopt the serial killer Henry the Eighth as a murderous role model. They are never happier than when they have a gun in their hands, their mother noted, though warning them not to be photographed with guns. I told them, she said, remember there is always someone in a high-rise flat who does not want you to shoot Bambies. Unfazed, Harry is accused of shooting owl-like hen harriers, of which there are only 700 breeding pairs, the bird's offence being to compete with humans in taking grouse though the hen harrier only kills them to survive. Equally undeterred, Harry's elder brother spots an ibis, a bird revered in ancient Egypt, as the envoy of Thoth, god of words and of wisdom, when William is out hunting in Kenya. This slow, graceful bird, with a beak like a crescent moon, is considered an omen, but to William it's a trophy, and he opens both barrels. But later on learning it's endangered, says lamely, I was told they were good enough to eat. Royal killing sprees start young. Prince William would kill his first stag on his grandmother's Burkhold estate, aged 14, after which the head stalker, Sandy Masson, bloodied the boy in an initiation rite that followed the royal slaughter. Sadly, using a high-velocity rifle to size up a trophy stag with the telescopic sights adjusted for him by a ghillie doesn't quite match the mystique of plucking a sword from a stone. So Merlin may have absented himself from this inaugural ritual. He may also have withheld his magic when Charles took William to Gloucestershire's Beaufort Hunt and urged him to watch a kill. For the English fox, as native to Merlin's soil as its ancient oaks, may take precedence over Saxe, Coburg, Goths. We must not let daylight in upon the magic, warned Walter Baggert.
The Victorian was fearful people might see through it. But royalists still strive to extend his warning to the present, though there's less magic in monarchy than ever. For just as with emperors and czars, the magic is manufactured. Royal figures with a high profile due to saturation publicity are people pretending to be state symbols and often go mad in the same way zoo animals can die from being stared at. <laughs>